Dr. William Nolan is with us. He's been with us several times before. He's an eminent surgeon and the author of several books about, well, naturally, medicine and surgery. What do you think he'd write about? <laughs> he also writes, oh, well, a man's a doctor. He's not going to write about trees. He writes a regular medical column from a calls magazine, and we're certainly need him here tonight. Would you, doc would you doctor, would you welcome Dr. William Nolan? Or Dr. William Nolan. Choose a doctor, doctor's advertising, right, yeah. and so forth. Have they gotten any closer to that? The doctors, the ME, uh, still a little reluctant to let uh, them advertise? Yeah, they're, they're still reluctant, but if you look in the LA Times paper, you find that they're, they are advertising, I mean, cosmetic surgeons particularly. Um, one of the things we're, we're thinking of talking about a little bit was this whole problem of, uh, you know, unnecessary surgery and elective surgery, and, and what the what the difference is, you know. What well, is elective surgery? Well, something you don't really need at the time, but you. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a bad term. You know, people have gotten the idea that we're running around unnecessarily operating on people. The the fact is that let's say I, I did probably I would say ten operations in the last couple of weeks, and uh, uh, six or seven of them would probably be classified as not necessary in the strict sense but appropriate, and I think that's right word. Well, uh, four gallbladders, a couple of hernia repairs. Now, uh, one, one cancer of the bowel, and uh, one, one cancer of the bowel, but that and, needed, right? you know, right, a cancer of the bowel, ruptured spleen, those are needed for, right away. But the others, you know, you could let them wait to see well, what they 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 go But they, 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 they have symptoms, they want to get rid of these symptoms, and so it's appropriate to remove the gallbladder to do this kind of, uh, the same thing applies in medicine, you know, there are, uh, oh, I, this uh, surgeon from out east was telling me Suppose about I came in to you and said, I want you to take my appendix out, which I've never no, seen. No, I, I wouldn't you say do it. don't do it. Well, no, no, I wouldn't do it. I mean, if you came in, you had the signs of an acute appendix. But uh, don't do it just to have it out. Well, no, no. I, now, if I were in operating on you for another reason, the, for example, if I were to take your call, or let's say we haven't called. You, you take the appendix off an encore or something? Well, like that, uh, I would, I would ask the patient, would you like me to remove your appendix while I'm in there? And if you would, I will do it. Well, I mean, as long as it's, the it's a open, you might as well. Yeah. I mean, you've got the abdomen open, they've had the anesthetic. Uh, a lot of patients will say, while you're there, will you take out my appendix? And it, I always tell them, if it's easy, I'll do it. If it's hard to get at it, then I won't do it. Uh, with hysterectomies, the same thing applies. It, you know, you remove the uterus. If the you know appendix is sitting right there, and if everything's gone well up to that point, right. they would like to have it removed just so they don't have to worry about it. But there there are a lot of things uh, in medicine that are a matter of judgment. Uh, um, oh, a surgeon friend of mine from back east was telling me about a cardiologist, about a doctor friend of his, went into the had a back corner in his late sixties, in he was in the intensive care unit, and uh, his his heart stopped. 13 times. I mean, he had to be restarted 13 times. You know, apply the electric shock and all that stuff. Now, it's a question of judgment. Should you do this or shouldn't you do this? Do what? Well, restart it. Uh, yeah. Well, honestly, I mean, you get somebody that's, that's just old uh, or that's not too well and has a very, uh, uh, you know, the chances of making it through aren't great. Uh, it's a matter of, of judgment. How far should you go? And uh, afterwards, there were three, you know, all this business that you've been reading in the you know, about life after life, where people who have been close to death have had procedures for themselves. Yeah, they, they supposedly have died, and they picture themselves. That, that I think, of course, as most doctors do, that this is strictly a matter of uh, lack of oxygen going to the brain. You know, who's in it? No, you're not really dead. But with this, this man, they asked him afterwards if he had any visions in the times that his heart had been stopped of what uh, the afterlife might have been like. And they, he said, no. And they said, well, what did you think about it? So well, the only two things that concerned me were, first of all, I was afraid there might be an intern on duty who wouldn't know what to do, you know, who would know which drugs to give or whether to apply to shocks. And uh, the second thing I worried about was that the man in charge of the coronary care unit might have been one of these damn fools that believes in the right to die. <laughs> I mean, he didn't want anybody taking care of him who felt that uh, well, you know, we've started them up 12 times, that's it, you know. That's uh, why that ethical question comes in. Right, it's an ethical question. 
Uh, well, we're faced with it a lot. I mean, I, I have patients with I'm cancer. Would you restart mine? Yes, yes. I, and of course, I, I want, I want right my now. restart, you know, you know, at every opportunity. Uh, but most surgery is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a matter of choice. I, I had my heart operated, as I've talked about several times here. Now, a, you know, a couple of my partners didn't think I should have that done. They thought I should go with the medical treatment. I could have done that. I'd probably still be around, but I would have had to change my lifestyle, which I didn't want to do. I still wanted to play racquetball. I wanted to write. I wanted to practice surgery. I wanted to do all these things. And you had to buy that. So I had to buy that. Mm -hmm. And I'm able to do all of Did they take out your appendix while they were in there? <laughs> <laughs> they were in the wrong cavity. Oh. They have ones. Yeah. No, they, uh, they left that. Yeah, and that's still got it. Uh, by the way, the uh, uh, point I'm making is that when we are accused of doing unnecessary surgery, it's a question not really of unnecessary surgery, it's a question of inappropriate surgery right. sometimes. And the argument they, they always throw on us is that over in England, where the doctor is not paid per capita by the case, there are fewer hysterectomies done than in this country. Is that true? Yes, it's true. And the reason is that the, the women who would like to have hysterectomies done because they are having lots of troubles with right. the uterus, can't get in to have the hysterectomy done because it is an elective operation. Now, they can't get in, so they have to live with a lot of symptoms that are very distressing. Mm -hmm. Or in this country, we can get them admitted. In this country, we find, as a matter of fact, that doctors' wives are more apt to have hysterectomies at a given age. Let's say you took a, a group of women 55, 56, mm -hmm. uh, were going through menopausal symptoms. Doctors' wives have a higher incidence of hysterectomy than do the general public. Why and not? Well, because access. money is no factor. You know, we all uh, uh, extend professional courtesy to one another so that they don't have to think about it and so they have it done. What I'm saying is that there's no evidence really that we're out there just chopping away. Uh, <laughs> well, because you know, away. I got some yeah. bills to pay this week and, and you know, I'm gonna do You just don't go out and say, hey, let's schedule a little operation. Oh, we got the car payment to do or something. And, and I, I don't. I don't think most people believe that. <laughs> we'll be right back.